Uh, I know that some in our audience know the finer points of hockey. The Chris Johnston Show. We are your friends. The biggest stories bringing you inside the game. What did you hear? The Chris Johnston Show. What is going on? Here's Chris with your host, Julian McKenzie. Part of the game. CJ, it feels like clockwork whenever this next topic comes up. Uh, the playoff format. Someone writes an article somewhere. Someone starts some discourse online about it. In particular, I'm, I'm thinking of Air Two Hotchek's column about how uh, the NHL playoffs uh, should revisit that one versus sixteen format. Uh, Thirty Two Thoughts today was talking about some of the playoff races, and and Elliot was really big on expanded playoffs. I would love to know your thoughts on the playoff format as it is. And how you would love to see it. And if you think we should have expanded playoffs at all or or a one through 16. Well, this can be a really quick topic because I have seen the perfect playoff format. We already yes. had it. One to eight each conference. Mm-hmm. That's the final answer. Like, I got no time for, you know, I love Elliot. But, like, do you we really think we need to see more than 82 games from one of the Islanders or, like, like the especially the Eastern Conference playoff races. I'm not hating on the teams, but it's just like these teams aren't screaming greatness. In fact, if you look at the East in particular, the West, we might have a better debate. Like St. Louis right now is is the first team that's not in a playoff position, and they would be a playoff position by points if they were in the Eastern Conference. But when you have one conference like the East, like I just, it's hard to argue any of those teams deserve more than the 82 games. Like it's long enough to decide. There's there's a there's a noticeable drop off in quality after about six teams in the East. Uh, maybe seven, depending on, you know, I think the, the lightning have crawled back into the conversation. So I'll say seven. Um, but I don't I don't see a reason for a ninth or tenth team to be part of this. And I think if you're going to have an 82 game regular season. Which it seems they're inclined to do. You have to make that matter and and to go 82 games and then have it all decided with a one game coin flip. I just I don't. I don't like the idea of that. So I, I the the issue is I, I think that the forced nature of the you know Atlantic Division, Metro Division, like the divisional playoffs, I don't like. I think one to eight would solve some problems. Did you know there's a world, and I don't want to bend brains out here for people that aren't able to look at this visually, but there is a world where the third place team in the Metro, which is a guaranteed spot, mm-hmm. ends up with fewer points than the first team that misses the playoffs, currently Detroit. It is possible if enough losing happens over this next two plus weeks that a team, you know, anyway. No, you're, you're right. I mean, we're recording right now. Washington is at 82 points. That's the same amount of points as the Flyers do. I think the way the NHL has it, they, I guess the Capitals have that up on a tie break, but the Red Wings are at 80 points. Right. It so is there's, possible. There's a world where both the Flyers and, and Capitals, just for argument's sake in this case, struggle down the stretch. The Red Wings win games. It, okay, it'd be hard, but it's still, it is mathematically possible the Red Wings finish with more points than the third I place finisher in the Metro. I believe which, you. Which is nuts. Yeah, but like, I don't know, every every year, I mean, not every year, but I'm not completely surprised. It's not the first time that's happened, I'm sure, if it ever gets to that point. I don't know. I I kind I don't hate the idea of expanded playoffs. Like, one through eight, I completely understand, but like, what's wrong with like a play-in game? Like, we all love the idea of, like, a game where we, the concept's simple. Two teams, they battle it out to try to win to get into the playoffs. People are going to get in. People are going to get into it. Like, why do we want to refuse that idea? I don't understand that. I think because – I think it cheapens a regular season. Like, it's – for me, as a Blue Jays fan, for example, it's kind of hard that the whole – hundred. you watch 162 games – your team makes the playoffs. They bring out the champagne. They they tarp up the, the locker room. Everyone goes nuts. The disco ball's going. And then they lose two games and the season's over. Like, it's just, I don't know. It feels like the, there's no getting around the fact there's drama to those games. But I think there's a hell of a lot of drama in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And You're absolutely right. But, like, this is what I love about the, Like, we're actually at the point now. I think that there's a better argument that the seeding almost doesn't matter, especially for the top teams entirely. Like, you know, obviously there's still a bunch of movement that can happen, but Rick, right now Vancouver could battle it out to be first seed in, in the West and they might get Nashville in round one, or, or you know, it could be Vegas and, and Edmonton playing. 
Um, and, and the East is, is kind of similar. I mean, you got some version of, you know, Toronto, Florida, Tampa Rangers, like, like, I just think that we're going to have all these great matchups in the first round. And so I, I've come around to this. I have to be honest. There, there was a time, maybe when I was spending more time with Elliot backstage when we worked at the same <laughs> network, maybe, but there was a time I was of his viewpoint that, you know, more is better. You can sell more. It's more games to air. I don't know. I'm starting to feel fatigue even for this season. And it's been a really good season. Like it's, that's not, I just feel, you know, it's April 1st as we're recording this and it's, we're still a long way from the first playoff game. It just, if there's anything, like I, I realize we won't waste time on this cause it's uh, for financial reasons, this will never happen, but I'd love to see a 70 game season. I'd love the playoffs to be starting any minute now. I'd love to get the cup handed out by the, about the end of May. But, you know, we're it's going the other way, and it's going to be the third week of June, potentially, if we get a seven-game cup final before we see the mug handed out on the ice somewhere. And let's face it, the third week of June, a lot of people like that that love our sport are going to be doing other things because it's just hard to think about a hockey game in the third week of June. And, Unless your team fun- But the funny thing is, is that it goes as far as it does, and or it's supposed to be this year, and then almost immediately after the NHL draft starts. Yeah. And they Which, jam in. And, yeah. It's, it's, look at it's TV driven. Like the cup finals moved back a week now. I mean, so it was moved back in obvious times back to 2020, 2021. You know, the, the, the schedule got thrown off by everything that happened with the pandemic and delays there. But now we're at a spot where the league could actually finish by mid June. And it, you know, from my understanding, the US TV networks want the sport to start a little later. So there's fewer games head to head with the, the NFL. And then they're comfortable with it ending when it does, you know, honor about the same time as the NBA finals. end. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I guess, I guess everyone has to have an opinion. I, I just think as much as I respect Eric's column, I read on the one to 16. And like, I think that that's probably cool. Like it's not fair that a team like Vancouver, let's say could finish number one overall in the league. and might have to start round one against Florida. And, and so they're, they're just facing just, horrendous travel right out of like their reward for being the best team in the entire league is something like that. Like, I don't think that flies. So I think you have to keep it within conferences. And I know certainly out West, of course, that the teams are more spread out, you know, geographically. So you're still going to get a lot of travel uh, in a one day conference situation in the Western conference. But I think that that's much better than one to 16. Um, But I I don't, I don't know. I don't want to see more teams. I want to see less teams. I want to see less games. Let's, what if what if you do one through sixteen, but the top seed in each conference picks who they want? Like I, I'm a big fan of that format, even if you did it like one through eight, or even in the format if you do it now. But if you do one through sixteen, isn't that like the perfect place to if you're a Vancouver, you don't want to have to make this entire trek out east to Florida. Just pick whoever you want. Pick a team that you've been feasting on all season in your conference and and maybe limit the travel that way. Maybe that's the perfect way to do it. Like, I, I think just generally you just do a TV special, have the GMs all in a room or something, or at least the, the one GM, the two GMs of the top teams in each conference, and they make their picks. Like, that's just any way to drive eyeballs to the sport and and drum up some drama. Like, that's I think that would work. Or at least I, I would I, like it. Well, it would work from a, I think you're right. It would work from a viewership standpoint. Like people would be interested. I don't know. The TV special itself might be kind of dry because it's, you know, there's not Fair. that much. But I mean, in terms of like the, the storylines that that would create, remember when this team chose that team over that team. But I, I just don't see anyone knowing how conservative the league is. I, I don't see anyone getting behind that. Um I just Who do don't. we have to talk I, I, to to change? Who do we have to talk to to change people's minds? Well, I mean, this is something like that kind of change would revolve involve changing a lot of minds. You know, I think at the end of the day, and this is where like it, it's rare that I would see Gary Bettman's view, but like he has said repeatedly, like what there's nothing broken here. What are we fixing? And and I'm kind of coming around, or of over time, I would say I can actually say it definitively. I've come around to sort of see it that way as well. Like, I think when we're recording an episode a couple Mondays from now and the, and the playoffs have started April 20th. So this is, you know, three weeks today, April 22nd, we are going to be so fired up about even just those first couple days, what we've seen, what's happened. 
you know, we don't even know the matchup yet. I don't know the schedule, but I can guarantee you when we do that Monday episode, we're both going to be pretty fired up about everything going on around the league. And so ultimately I think the NHL has it right. I think the other sports have had to do it because they're playing catch up in their, in their respective playoffs. They're, they, you know, the NBA regular season doesn't have anywhere near as close a race as generally speaking as the NHL's, you know, baseball is a different animal. 162 games. It's just insane especially when you cheer for the blue jays you know they're going to lose like 80 of them plus i love uh, the optimism i'm still down i could tell you are but like a it's day today a week today though i'll be at the home opener okay you'll be having a when is looney dog day or whenever that is no it's not that won't be the first game that those are on tuesday nights usually okay. i don't know if the second game of the season has one but certainly uh i won't be eating i'm not going to be competitive eating but i will have a hot dog while i'm at that game you should have you should treat yourself I'm already, I'm like mentally, I've already ordered the hot dog and it's a week in advance. So like <laughs> there is, there is no circumstances unless I get violently ill that day that I'm not uh, chowing down. By the way, this, is, oh, you this go, is actually, you this could be defining for our podcast, frankly. So well, because we what, just what come mean? through the Easter holiday and yes. I ate a pack of these, I need to know Cadbury where do mini you, eggs. where do you stand on mini eggs? I, I I like mini eggs. I don't okay, like good. love them. I'm not going to sit down and like wolf them down. But if I was offered mini eggs, I would eat them. Okay. Because if you were going to say you didn't like those, or if you had some take, if you're going to roll out some oh, take about on. how they're the grossest thing ever, no, that could, I come that on. could almost be a deal breaker for us. Like we barely <laughs> got through the arrow debacle of two seasons ago, but I can live with I can you live with a difference of opinion go. on that. I'm you gotta saying, let that arrow stuff go, man. I'm just it, saying these it. are these are where it's the mini at. eggs. Mini eggs are fine. They're nice candy to have over the Easter holiday, uh, which happy Easter to everyone. Uh, but yeah, they're fine. Like they're also like kids' candy. Like it, like I'm not gonna dump on that. Like it's fine. It's okay. I'm the, I'm the biggest kid you know then because I like these. I mean, I'm not like. Oh, you are the biggest kid. You are the biggest kid I know. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this too, though. I don't, have you heard of the concept of shrinkflation? No, I have not. The, the concept basically is that like what one thing's company's doing is when prices are going up is they, they make all the packaging smaller to like sort of subtly give you less, you know, bang for what you're, you're paying for. Like this pack of mini eggs, I ate them in about six seconds. Like, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like everything nowadays, honestly, not just candy, but like every time you go buy something, it's like, this looks like what it used to look like, except it's a third smaller. Like what is with this? <laughs> It's kind of like me saying I'm I'm bigger than I actually am, right? Is that that's the joke? No, that's the easy joke to make. I ain't taking shots at you because producer you're... Nick made that joke off air, and he thinks right. he's funny. Right. Well, I mean, I'm just saying we're you and I are copacetic right now. We 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 agree on many eggs. There's no there's no tension here on the pod. But yeah, yeah. packages are getting smaller, and I just wish my mini eggs were. I wish I had a few more of these right now because. That was the only really package about the, I got. If you think about the list of disagreements, right? It's arrow, poutine. Hot what dogs. else is there really? Poutine and, hot and, dog. and poutine hot dogs. It's really just those things, right? Everything else, it's kind of like okay, whatever, fine. But like those are, it's really I don't just know. Those two you're trying to argue for expanded playoffs right now, and I'm not. I'm not buying what you're selling. I mean, I I wouldn't be opposed to it. I don't know if I'm gonna die on that hill. I'm more into the idea of top teams in each conference picking who they want to play in the first round. That I'm willing to die on a hill on. Right. And here's the thing. Hell I'm yeah. not against you on that. I'm just like being more, I'm just being the, prag, I'm being the pragmatist. And I'm just like, I just know, I know who in this league would have to be people in high power would have to change that rule and they'd have to be behind it and believe it's it just, it's not happening. Like hockey people at their core. And, and you can't say hockey people, but like, cause there's a, obviously a range of people, but like a lot of people in this sport are truly, truly, like they're they're superstitious, man. At the, at the core, like I just think, you know, they they Sidney Crosby eats like a peanut butter sandwich before every game and does the same routine, and you know, lots of players put on their equipment in the same order or tape their stick a certain way or do this. And I just don't think that many teams would ever go off the board and you know where one would choose like the eighth best team and or like I just think I don't know. They like, feel like they're his death, man. Like they feel and, like they were like mentioned- ruffling the the ghosts or something. If if you like pick the team that you say had a perfect record against but like safe is death. Like you mentioned the idea of like all the other teams 
playing catch up with their playoffs. I mean, if you look at it from a rating standpoint, isn't the NHL playing catch up? Like, shouldn't they be doing things to catch up to all these other leagues, especially in North America? Like, I, it's a that's a very valid argument. I but I think that the people, the owners of the teams, like they have to feel that way. I think a lot of them they're getting great return on the investment they made into their individual franchises. I think they're happy where they are. I think they're happy with the idea the league is the fourth best professional sports league in North America in terms of revenues. Complacency is bad. Complacency is terrible. And it will all do us in if that's the mentality. Right. And here's the thing. I love this game. You know that. I know you love Me this too. game. Me too. We both like, love this game. But I, I don't know if it could ever climb higher, honestly. I'm not yeah. saying you shouldn't try things. Don't get me wrong. No. But, I mean, there's some obvious, you know, downfalls here. You know, even talking to some of the, you know, it's kind of cool. Like, we've got these kids coming from Arizona now. Like, Josh Doan made his debut, obviously. You got Matthew Nyes, you know, Matt, Austin Matthews. Like, like all of a sudden, that's becoming a place that develops hockey players. They have, like, six or seven sheets of ice in the Valley. Maybe it's a couple more than that. It's not very much. In fact, you know, I heard those guys talking about that. It's like, there's just not enough ice to, to grow the sport the way you'd want to recreationally. Like, there's, there's a lot of challenges the sport faces, whereas, you know... You go most places, there's a basketball hoop. Like, like you, it's just, it's more accessible to play a sport like that. Um, anyway, I'm way off topic. No, we have no, no topic. No, but no, 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 no. I don't think you're way topic, off topic at all. And I just like think it's still it's a regional somewhere. sport. And obviously we're seeing it new is. regions embrace it, which I'm all for. Like, you will never hear me talk about whatever Sunbelt teams or whatever. Like, some of the Sunbelt teams, whatever you want to call those teams, are, are the most electric markets the league has just in terms of fan interest of vibe in the building of places players want to live and play and call home um you know like oh, so the growth has worked in, in in a sense like not i'm not saying look at like there were some really bad days for the panthers for example like th there was many many years not a lot of people went to games but look at them now like now it's like they got they got something going on there like in addition to yeah. being one of the best teams in the league it's just great place to play they've opened this new practice rink like like they're they've got they're ticking all the boxes there and so i guess growth is there for the nhl i just it's hard to see it which sport is it passing like in popularity baseball i mean i'm not sure it might be it might be the closest one right now i mean soccer is universal the nfl is king like we've literally had ep we you could listen to different hockey podcasts. I know we did this a lot on the athletic hockey show, but like if a big thing happened in the NFL, we'd end up talking about that at some point. You've, we've mentioned your Dallas Cowboys a bunch of times. Like the NFL is king. It's going to come up. It's funny. I had this experience at the athletic. There was something happened a week or so ago and I was inquiring about whether I should write a story on a piece of news. And they're like, nah, the NCAA tournament's on. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, I mean, look, but at that's all, but that's all the more reason for the league to try to like stand out and, and for people to recognize that like, okay, being complacent isn't the right thing. Like if that's the mentality that we're going to have, then I mean, interest in the league is going to wane. It's going to die. Like, well, the reality good. is there's a finite amount of money in the world. There's a finite amount of time. Most importantly, like if you're, if you're a consumer, you only have so much time to watch sports. So yeah. like you I mean it's it's truly hard to watch them all. I mean it's easy to maybe watch highlights of them all. But like how invested can any individual be in every sport? I mean I I I find it limited. I I can watch the Cowboys every week. You know, I love the Blue Jays, but like most of the time during this like before we get to the real big games, I'll watch a portion of a game if I'm home. I'll catch like an hour. But I'm not sitting and watching a whole game uh for the most part. Again, until you get it deep into the summer or the the fall. Um you know, I watch a bit of golf here and there. I could tell you next week's Masters week. Like I'm already. I can't wait for. I I like. I mean, I, I that's like the one major I try to pay attention to the most. Just I just for some reason the pageantry, the time of year. I love that tournament. I will find a way to watch it. Smart. I mean, it's the perfect. It's perfect for those reasons, right? It does. It does sort of mark and like I know we've passed the official first day of spring, but it truly feels like wow, we survived the winter when you get to the Masters. Uh, and you know, it's, it's just a really unique tournament, the way it's broadcast. They have like no commercials. Like those guys got so much money there. They don't even, they show like one minute of commercials an hour or something, whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, we are all anyway, over the, we're all over the map. That's fine. I, 
but that that's okay that's 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 like it's never a problem when we do that because at least it was a constructive conversation but i think at the ultimate to put a bow on it you're not pro expansion of playoffs i'm at least open to the idea and ultimately maybe the people at the top of the nhl just don't care about making that much more money i don't know i don't know that's at least how i'm taking it fair but i i don't know I like apparently the TV networks have never shown much interest in more playoffs too. Like that's the other thing I've heard is that you don't have one of the big networks or maybe even a new up and coming network be like, why don't you create these wild card games and you know we'll pay you X to broadcast them and I think we can monetize this. Like I'm not saying there wouldn't be excitement about those games, but I also think I don't know some of them might not. That's an I important guess, point though. What would we have right now? We'd have something like depending how you did it. If you did an eight versus nine game, you'd have what? You'd have uh, Philadelphia versus Just copy versus what the Detroit. NBA did. Just copy what the NBA did and do like your... Do they what, have like seven eight? to ten as well? Yeah, like you, you have that, seven to ten. You have seven, ten, play each other, eight, nine. And like if but you But then seven, lose... you'd have Tampa in the East, I'm thinking. You'd have like Tampa playing who? The Islanders? Oh, God. Okay, now but I But imagine to like Tampa really lost that. Yeah, tough luck. We literally just had a season where the Boston Bruins were the greatest regular season team of all time, and they lost in seven games to Florida. Yeah, regular but that went, doesn't matter that much. That went to the end. Like, that went... And they lost. Forget this. The Panthers tied that game up with 59 seconds left in regulation in game seven and won in overtime. And they lost. But that was the is best, close. It's the best regular season team ever. The fact that it got to that point was but was surprising enough. At least they got seven full games before losing. I don't know. They, they lost. I like, don't want to see a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning not reach the playoffs on because some tenth team gets hot or their goalie. I don't know. Yeah, but like, I don't know, man. Like, we keep saying, like, man, the regular season has to matter. Like, we already are covering a sport where, like, the Stanley Cup is the ultimate prize, and we've already made it where the regular season doesn't really matter. So, like, who cares if like a tenth seed finds a way to get it in? It matters because you got to get in. Like the Panthers didn't, but they that's didn't it. Win, like that's seven that's in a row last year to get in. At the end of the oh. year, remember? You no, know, you're, 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 right. you're absolutely right. You're right. The light. It started with Alex Lyon. And now Sergey Bobrovsky is, I mean, he's returned to four. I was getting total flashbacks because their first win of that win streak was a game in Toronto. And it was obviously similar time in the schedule to right now. And I remember the Panthers coming in that day and they looked like they were like, they were alive mathematically, but they didn't seem really that alive. And they'd run into issues with the goaltending and, and they actually got, they got trounced in terms of how they played against the Leafs, but they, they, you know, Lion King made 40 odd saves and that started their whole run. And the Panthers are here today. That's the other the reason I was getting flashbacks is I went down to the morning skate this morning and it's Paul Maurice there again, you know, talking about how much has changed in a year for their team. I mean, this is a wild sport. This is truly anyone could win it this year, I think. I had a player That's tell fun. me recently that like the one team he wouldn't want to play is is the Predators. Believe it or not. They've been the and hottest like, team for the last month and a bit. Right. But, like, if you would have said that in December, no one would have bought that. Like, if I had to come out here and said that, they'd be like, okay, you're talking to the wrong players or something. They'd be like, that's that's bogus. But, like, he was saying that they, they're they pretty big, they're physical. He's like, that you never get anything off the rush against them. That they never let you get behind them. And he's like, they're just tough. He's like, he's like you look at Forsberg and Yossi, like these guys, and, and obviously Saros when he's on. So, like, anyway, if we're going, if we're willing to say, and I'm not saying that you're – I'm not putting words in your mouth, Julian. But if we're going to include the Predators in the t in the list of teams you don't want to play, like this league goes like twelve deep. Postseason's going to be fun, as you mentioned earlier. Like when it comes time, when it comes time for those matchups, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Like, but reasonably... also to show that, like, if you are this team that was so good for a chunk of the year, and then you, like, what does it matter? I don't know. Let's not expand I... the playoffs. Just keep doing what you're doing, NHL. Um, I do want to transition over to uh, uh, be Austin Matthews at 60 goals. Uh, Connor McDavid is having a crazy year. Uh, I think the fact that those two players, obviously, I mean, we know them, the two of the best players in the league, but just their seasons this year, unreal. Uh, I'm going to read off a quote that uh, you got from Paul Maurice on Austin Matthews. We'll start with him. Well, man, what game is it? 74? He's got 60? So nobody's got that figured out. I'm not the smartest guy in the league. 
I'm just going to put a bunch of guys out and hope they defend the hell out of it if they can. Can you put into perspective how special Austin's second 60 goal season has been? Well, I think the fact that he's only the ninth player ever with more than one puts it into a certain perspective. I mean, we're 105 plus years into this league and, and, you know, obviously in the very early days, different schedule was, but it wasn't maybe as possible, but it's still, it's pretty unique. And, you know, he's still got nine games as of this recording to add to it. Like you can't totally multiple of his teammates have brought up 70 since he hit 60. Like, I'm not saying that's going to happen. Obviously the odds are against any player scoring 10 over the final nine games. I don't even know if he's going to play all nine. That's the other part of it. Um, but like he, he is scoring at a rate, you know, you look back, hat tip producer drew and to the Reddit user. I can't remember which Reddit user it was, mm. but if you look at all players drafted in the 2010s, Austin Matthews now has more goals than anyone that includes those picked in 2010. He was picked in 2016. And after seeing that stat that drew shared in our group chat, I actually went through personally myself. If you go back to the 2008 draft year, that being eight drafts before Austin Matthews was drafted, only two players from 2008 to today have scored more goals than him drafted them. Steven Stamkos, who was drafted number one in 2008, and John Tavares, his teammate in Toronto, was drafted first in 2009. But I mean, it, you know, you're talking like historical, you know, he's scoring at a better rate than Ovechkin did to start his career. Certainly not a prediction. He can keep it up going as long as what Ovechkin's done, because I think that's, that's the big question. As great as Austin Matthews is like, I'm telling you, he's, he's rewriting record books at the start of his career. He would, you know, he's still not even halfway to Ovechkin's total. So like he would have to keep this going for a long, 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 long time to, to get into the, the all time scoring race conversation at some point down the line. But um, you know, what was cool to me, Julian, I don't know if you saw the highlights. First of all, Leafs fans absolutely invaded Buffalo for the game on Saturday. As they and normally if you do. saw the way that Austin Matthews himself celebrated the 60th goal, keep in mind that was a three, nothing goal with, you know, five or six minutes left, whatever it was. Like you, it showed how much it meant to him. Right. And he had actually taken 17 shots between his 59th goal and his 60th. So it wasn't a long way. It was only two games, but you know, he was, he was chasing that one. And, you know, I'll be, be curious now if he could get to 70, he would be the 15th, 15th season ever of 70 goals. You know, some players did it more than once, but 15th individual Connor McDavid is four assists from a hundred. Yes. If, if he gets to that, which, you know, it seems likely uh knock wood providing health and everything goes the way it should. seems like that's pretty safe. He'd only, he would be the 14th player, 14th season of a hundred assists. So like, those are two pretty, you know, in a sense that they're comparable. They're, they're different, uh, different things, of course. But, you know, the fact that both those guys are even kind of in the conversation for it shows the years they're having. And, you know, the Leafs need Matthews, too. I mean, that's that's the other part of this. Like, uh, there's a debate in Toronto going on right now. He scored 60 goals two years ago in a season where he played 73 games. He's at 72 right now. And people are saying, which was the better season? I would argue this was the better season because this team – on paper anyways, is not as strong as where the Leafs were two years ago. Um, he's being asked to do a lot more. He's had a penalty killing duties and his defensive impacts this year have been off the charts. Good. If you look at the underlying numbers. And so it's pretty special when you have a guy who's scored 60 by himself. Remember 59 of them have been against the goalie, only one into an empty net and 45 have been at even strength. You know, it's one of the best seasons ever in terms of even strength goal, goal scoring. In fact, the, the only one better from recent memory is Steven Stamkos had 48 the year he scored 60 at even strength. So Matthews has a chance of that. I mean, basically, you're, you start you have to like go deep into a record book to try to find perspective. I think that ultimately speaks for itself, you know, how special it is. And um, yeah, I'm just curious, like I everyone asks, like, what's the number? I think 66 would be, you know, McDavid at 64 last year and Ovechkin had a 65 goal season. Like, I think the best goal scoring season of this era would be 66 goals. So that's to me, that's the target with nine games left, you know, certainly no slam dunk, but Matthew seems to score every night. So my one thing about this is Austin's having this special season and 70 is still within reach. I don't know how exactly how many games the Leafs have left, but like, it's still in reach. If, if it they got goes nine games left, so you'd have to score 10 goals in nine games. Like that would be a toward pace, but like, it's still possible. What I think is, wild about it is that he's having this year and depending on how your 
you're putting together your MVP ballot, he might be third or fourth. Like how many people would look at what he's doing this year and size it up with us, with, um, with Nathan McKinnon, with Connor McDavid, with Nikita Kucherov and say, okay, Austin Matthews is having a better season than those three guys. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what the voters will think, but I'm with you. Like certainly, he's certainly not the favorite for the heart. No, uh, where he falls. Where would you the... have him? If you were, to, I know your answer would probably change. If you had to put together an MVP ballot, where would, where do you think you'd put him? It's a hard one, man. Cause here's the thing is, and I'm not taking like anything you say here could be taking away from someone else. Like it's the hardest thing to do in the game is score. And you know, he scored 59 goals against the goalie. So like, he's not getting, there's not a lot of easy calories in there. You know, anyone who might even want to disparage him and say, Oh, it's, you know, he's a product of playing with Mitch Marner, which obviously helps. I'm not, but he's actually produced at a higher rate when Marner has been out of the lineup uh, in, in a lot of metrics. So it's, it's not as though he's being carried by as a playmaker. It's a pretty special season. And, and, and the reason some of the other guys that are higher on the list in terms of points is frankly, it just comes down to either more power play points, which they all count the same, but they're are arguably a little easier to compile and, and, or second assists. And so I'm not arguing by any stretch that he should necessarily be one, but it, it's, it's a real debate. Um, and I don't, I don't know how you do it. Like McDavid, what's crazy about him. We haven't even touched on him yet is he was 126 or whatever on the scoring list in no- November. And for 30 seconds, any 30 minutes anyway, on Saturday afternoon, uh, he got into the first place spot. Like he, he made the, from all the way back in the pack, uh, got right to the first place spot. You know, he, since basically it's been Kucherov or McKinnon for most of the season, uh, occupying the top spot of the scoring charts. But, you know, if he wins a scoring race, if he, you know, it seems almost inevitable, he gets a hundred assists. Like, I, I don't know how we pick it this year. I, I, I really I, don't know how I to, have no idea. I don't, because you, it's not always you have this many supremely special individual seasons in one year, right? Like there's always great players every single year. Like that's not a, that that's kind of a given, but there's not always like some of these are like going to be historically significant seasons. Like there is a world, I'm not saying it's likely, but Matthews gets 70 goals, McDavid gets 100 assists, and either McKinnon or Kucherov win the scoring title. In addition to all that stuff, right? McKinnon's had a point in all but one avalanche home game this year. Like it's just, there's been a lot of really interesting individual accomplishments. And so I think it all comes down to how you value some of the other things maybe, because you're not just measuring stats in that case. Um. I don't know. We're going to have to cast these ballots pretty soon, but I, I, I honestly, yeah. I'm not dodging the question. I do not have an answer for, I don't know what the, the, what the ideal lineup is there. I think that's fine that you don't have an answer because it just shows how difficult this is. Also, one other thing that needs to be mentioned with McDavid and, and everything he's got going on. I think you mentioned it's 13 times it's happened where a player's had a hundred assists or more in a season. Important piece of context here. Only four players have done that. And one guy has done it like 11 out of 13 times. Right. Like, so only three right now. He would be the fourth, right? He would be the fourth. It's if Lemieux, we... Bobby Orn, and 11 times for Wayne Gretzky. Correct. Yes. That's an important piece of context with this. Like, it's not just like, oh, yeah, like 13 different guys have done this. Like, the greatest player who ever lived has done this more than anybody. A ridiculous amount of times. Well, I think it's wild that McDavid scored 64 last year and then now is about to get 100 assists. Like, it's like... That's insane! It's like, basically, like, he's like a... He really is a cheat code. It's like, he can beat you any which way. Uh, like, any which way. And, you know, this is such an important season in Edmonton. I know we'll zoom in on that as we get closer to the playoffs, but, like, it almost feels kind of all or nothing. That's maybe a little dramatic. That's, that's a little bit of media, media teased up. But with just such you know, uncertainty about what the team's going to look, look like with Julian Dreisaitl only having one more season under contract as of now. Like, th- these, this year carries massive stakes in Edmonton. They made the early coaching change. Um, and look where they're at. There's no reason they can't go on a long playoff run. That being said, they could lose in round one. They could play yeah. Vegas. Right? Like they lose to Vegas. Yeah. If they lost to Vegas, would you be that shocked? No. I wouldn't. I- and Vegas, you know, Vegas under the hood looks pretty good as a team right now, but you know, they're not, they, they've been injured. Like they're not getting to play a full lineup. I know Thomas hurdles working his way back is about to make his debut here in the near future for them, but you know, they're still without Mark stone. Um, 
you know, they, they're just not, they're not the Vegas of last season right now, but it's like they could turn into that team still. They're dangerous, man. I, I just, we can't, like, I felt at the beginning of the year with Vegas, you can't sleep on them. Now you just watch out. And then, Colorado might be the team, but just watch out. Yeah, they, I put them in the same class still as Tampa, and I know Tampa's probably gone down in some people's eyes. Like, to me, it doesn't matter where they finish. No one is going to want to play them. Like, I don't care what their regular season record is. I don't care how they got in. Like, these guys have the benefit of the doubt in my eyes that, that they're going to play at a – like, they're, they know what it takes to get the job done in the playoff time. And even the Lightning right now, like – as we touched on Friday, John Cooper is the only coach in the Atlantic division who hasn't torched his team in like the last seven days. Cause all they do is win. That could change. Cause I John actually Cooper's saw a guy who could torch his team over the weekend. Cooper had like a kid up at the podium with him. It was like a, you know, a junior <laughs> reporter or something. And like, and like one of the reporters asked like a real question, like, you know, what do you make of this new second line? And Coop's like saying, you know, kid will answer the question. Like, You'll have like <laughs> my point is he's like, the other the other coaches in the division are like grinding nails and you know all stressed out and Coop's like bringing kids up to the podium and goofing around. So it helps when uh, you've won eight of your last ten, like uh, John Cooper is. I, maybe it's more than that, but just on the NHL side, in the last ten it says eight one and one for the Lightning. I think times are good. Times are pretty good if you're uh, John yeah. Cooper in the Lightning. and Vasilevsky is starting to look like the old Vasilevsky, which I think is you know that's that, that's kind of the secret sauce to those Tampa teams. Like mm-hmm. they had. Those teams had a bit of everything, but what they also had is a goalie that played like every single game in the playoffs and was giving you above average goaltending. Certainly was the, he was not the reason you lost too many of those games. Now, one of the outliers last season's series against the Leafs, which I covered, you know, I think there's an argument. It was a six game series. I think there's an argument. The lightning had an edge in the way that that series was played out, but you know, Samsonov was the better goaltender uh, in in those those six games than than Vasilevsky, which again is a rare thing. But which Vasilevsky you get or not is probably going to have a huge factor uh, in in terms of what kind of run the Lightning can put together here. Okay, and with that, by the way, Steven to- Stamkos, it's April first. What about it? Three months from potentially hitting unrestricted free agency. You want to open that door again? Well, I mean, there's nothing really to add because I, I have no reason to believe anything's changed. But I mean, the fact, I'm just saying, the fact we're that close and he's just sitting there like it just, I don't know. It's its unusual. Playoff run, probably focusing on that. Leave that as an off season thing. Like... Oh yeah. That's been the plan all along. Like, and that nothing has changed again, unless everyone's doing it in the covert darkness of night. But I have no reason to believe that the, that's the case. Yeah, I do have a story coming up soon on The Athletic with Joe Smith where we talk to a bunch of Stamkos' former and a couple of current teammates kind of about how they view that situation, about how they view Stamkos in terms of his place in Lightning history. I mean, keep in mind, this guy was drafted first overall in 2008. Yes. So let me do some math quick on the back of the napkin. That's 16 years ago. Yes. The franchise was born in 1991, which was 17 years before... 2008 like he has almost been a member of the lightning franchise since for half of its time like 45 north of 45 percent of the time the lightning have been an organization he's been on the roster like and and, everything to that team and he's been the captain for a long time he's been part of four teams that went to the cup final two that lifted the trophy two others that lost in game seven of the eastern conference final um he's one of a very few players in NHL history who has 500 goals and 500 assists. He's a first class uh, representative in the community. He's beloved by his teammates. And I, that part I can, I don't think I'm spilling tea from the story Joe and I are going to have, but you know, got a lot of stories of things that he's done over the years and anecdotes, absolutely beloved guy in their community. And he's three months from unrestricted free agency. Just saying. Just could you imagine July comes around? Steven's just like, Hey, you know what? I want to go somewhere different. Maybe try. Well, I'll say Alex Kalorn, his former teammate who's in Anaheim, did say, like, obvi- like we all know this. Steven Stamkos wants to stay in Tampa. Like, that, that has not changed. But he did mention, like, he's a Hall of Fame guy. And he's obviously got a lot of pride. And, like, there is a point where if he doesn't feel wanted, like, maybe he gets to the point where he feels like he, he has to leave. I don't think he's there yet. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Please don't radio me on my own podcast here. SDPN 
Uh, you hear that? SDPN, Justin Fisher, Nick Andrade, all of y'all don't do it. But I, I'm just saying like, it's, it's crazy, not crazy. It's just unusual. Someone of that stature, even coming off the seasons he's had this year, his points totals are down a bit, but he's going to be another 30 plus goal season. Still very dangerous in the power play for that team. Like it's not as though we're talking about a fourth liner here all of a sudden. Like it's just, just hard to imagine. They might walk him right out the door, but if there's one organization that might do it, I think it could be this one. Cause they've made a lot. They've, I mean, the, the cap has forced them into hard decisions, but they've made a lot of hard decisions. Like a lot of heart and soul players of their championship teams have been traded away or walked to free agency before them. So uh, same time, three months from now, we talk about uh, Steven Stamkos or on June 10th, we're talking about his extension. Who knows? Like there is a world. Like I, again, I don't think this is it's very specific date. You just mentioned. Well, I was just picking a day out of the. I know, but I know. I'm just, I'm just teasing. But I am saying really more that, like, I don't think that this is a fait accompli in either direction. Like, I think it's still very much kind of a jump ball in terms of where it, where it lands. Um, but as you know, I've had my eye on this one. Like, I just yes, part of the more I don't know. Like, it's it's not just a hockey argument here. It's like the rare player that truly I think really brings a lot of things beyond just like what you can find on hockey DB to that franchise, to that city. And I don't know, play them, playing them hard yeah. in negotiations by not negotiating at all. Never thought we'd be in a situation where we'd be wondering about the futures of Steven Stamkos and Sidney Crosby in the same summer. It's entirely likely both of those players stay with their respective franchises, but wouldn't it be something if one or either of just either of them decided they wanted to change? Yeah, it'd be wild. It would be very wild. So pick one anyway. team you'd want to see Stamkos on just like for fun. Let's say he gets the free agency, just like, and you can choose chaos. You can choose whatever, like, where would you want him to go? Like, wouldn't it be something I I don't have everyone's cap space in front of me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah what teams would do Park that like, a little bit like just try to think yeah of... like toronto obviously there's the, the ontario connections like that would like i could see that as in like you know wanting to play close to home and all that but wouldn't it be something if just he felt what if he went to florida what if he went to the florida panthers what if the panthers just said screw it we're signing you and he stays in the state of, of, of florida but he plays for the rival team and helps them on their efforts of remaining competitive that's the ultimate chaos option for me it is, and it would obviously give him a chance to chase the Stanley Cup, presumably, again. You know, I just wonder, would that damage your, to any degree, would that damage your legacy in Tampa by signing with the rival? No. No. He's meant so much to that team. He's won with that team. You just mentioned it now. He spent, like, almost, like, all this time throughout their entire history. I don't think it damages it that much. It would be very weird, and maybe people would look at the front office and be like, well, how could you let this guy go to this team? But nah, I, I, I think he's done. Maybe people, it would be one of those things where people would get mad. And then after a while, once he's retired, we let bygones be bygones. Like Tampa Bay Lightning fans would be like, just ignore the last one or two years of his career where he was a Florida Panther. Let's ignore it. Right. Like when Joe Montana be the first was guy a can- member of the Kansas City Chiefs. And a lot of people kind of probably forget that over time. That's it, right? Like, and he wouldn't be the first guy to play for a rival organization after we've known him to play for another team. Like, Guy Lafleur was a Quebec Nordique for a brief period of time, but we and a New York Ranger, and a New York Ranger. Like, it happens. How like, about for guys playing on rival teams? How about a like Stamkos reunion with Steve Eiserman in Detroit? That would be really sick. That'd be kind of cool too. And I mean, he gets again from storyline. I'm just thinking storylines and all and that. He gets stuff. Derek Lalone as head coach. Mm, that. Ooh, and I should be very clear. I'm not. Sir. Floating this. I'm not floating this as information. I'm literally. I'm just. I'm sitting here. I just ate a pack of mini eggs. It's. It, we are. I'm just thinking of like what could be fun. This might be as close as as to us resuscitating the what if segment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to ask CJ before I get myself in any more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to get to ask CJ. Uh, the uh, Monday segment where we take in questions from viewers and listeners like you. Anyway, first one from. Actually, you know what? Let's go to this one from Brad. What do you think the Red Wings offseason looks like? They're going to sign Steven Stamkos. Steven Stamkos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. It's a fair question, but it's a hard one to answer until seeing how the season ends, right? Yeah. And, you know, one of the big decisions or one of the big 
focal points, I think, will be where does Patrick Kane stay there? Remember, he only signed a one-year deal there. Um, and he's played pretty well coming off the hip resurfacing procedure that not a lot of players have ever had or come back from. He's kind of one of the guinea pigs for lack of a better term, uh, for that procedure. I mean, he's, he's been productive and been a useful member of the team. I, I just, I can't predict what the off season looks like without knowing how the most important part of the story ends, because, you know, so many, if they get in or not, I think makes a difference if how they play, how certain players perform. I mean, this, this team has been sort of in a retool slash rebuild for a long time. I think they do have some promising young guys in the roster. So I think they're going to keep adding around those players. And so I said, that's the best answer I can give, which is like a bit low on specifics, just without knowing how this last two weeks of the regular season and the playoffs go. The most impressive part of that answer is not once did you say, I don't have a crystal ball. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Next one from Taylor Chova. Uh, speaking of chocolate, what is the superior Easter chocolate, solid or hollow? Solid. Yeah, I like solid. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's... it. In this shrinkflation world, though, I hollow might... would make more sense. It's like you think you're getting more than you are. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I like O'Henry, so, like, I guess hollow. I don't know. But solid's but great. I think, like, I think the spirit of the question, like, you probably had those little eggs... You, you like take the foil off. Some of them kind of are more, some of them are hollow and some of them are like thick right through. Yeah. Or like the Hershey's kisses. Yeah. Those ones would be hard. The solid ones. Chocolate's chocolate, man. I mean, I shouldn't maybe no. not, cho- not all chocolates are all chocolate. That's, that's actually very wrong. I was um, like, we, but we, we had like a whole war. I'm cho- going to say on this, like chocolate civil war. <laughs> it's, literally, <laughs> it's literally what happened. It's literally we had a what CJ happened. Joe civil war over chocolate. I remember Good like going Lord. out to the store to buy some to eat them on the episode to make a point. I still can't believe you did that. You, you <laughs> I la- I still laugh at like the clip about me saying uh, the arrows are not good. And you're just like, what? Like I never <laughs> seen you look that animated about anything in your life. Anyway, um, solid, hollow. You win in either way. If you no like way. That. Solid is the answer. Final answer. Okay. All right. So, okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't feel that spirited enough about solid or hollow. They're both solid. Good final answer. All right. CJ's final answer is solid. From Yotes. Can girl. you tell I had chocolate today? I'm all like, whoo. I mean, you've literally been flashing the Cadbury mini eggs package like, what, five times? Three, four, five times? There you go again. Now we need a Cadbury sponsorship. Right on. Yeah. You can't be flashing that. That's free promo for them, as far as that's I'm true, concerned. That's true. Well, I also okay. ripped them for the size of this friggin' thing, so. Yeah, okay. We gotta have to maybe they make a CJ size. 33 grams? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> What's wrong? You don't want to eat too much of those. Like it might go to your hips. I don't know. I know. I should probably be more worried about that, but I'm just saying, like a Patrick Waugh number of grams. 33 is a high. 33 is a good number. I'd like it to be more like 50 or 80. <laughs> Just go to the store. And we buy could have like a, a Joseph bag. Wall number of grams. It could be a 60 gram. You you easily could have that. Absolutely. All right. From Yotes Girl. If CJ had to choose one NHL running buddy, who would he pick and why? If he picked a celebrity running buddy, who would it be and why? So you need a celebrity running buddy and an NHL running buddy. Well, the easy answer is Dan Chara. That's exactly what I was looking for. Because... I mean, not only is he a tremendous runner, he ran his first full marathon like within literally a minute of my fastest ever marathon. Unfortunately, he's got faster since then, which is, I mean, great job, Z, but it, mean, it, it means I would maybe have trouble keeping up with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we were doing a short enough run, I think I could hang with him. I think he'd be an interesting guy. We'd look pretty funny running down the road with, you know, the, 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 the massive difference in leg length and overall height. So he, he'd be my... NHL pick. I don't know. Like, I don't know which celebrities run. I'm sure a lot of them do, but I, I don't know. Like, do you have a good? Are there any known runners in celebrity circles? I have or? no idea. I have no idea. I don't know why Michael Bublé popped into my head. I feel like it would just be like funny, but I have no idea if he runs. Yeah. So I, I don't have a good celebrity answer, mostly because I don't know the celebrity runners. But 
I'm, are you into you're not even really into like celebrity pop culture like that you don't really keep up with celebs like that no but weirdly i bet if someone was known to be a runner it would i would know more like i would have heard about it Fair. i would have saw like obviously i follow i read like running stories like i, I follow running people on ig like normally because you see the odd ig and it has like everyone sort of like semi-famous who's run a marathon and it will have like their best time yeah. it's like it's kind of cool if you've been a runner like it's like i could it's the only thing on earth. I remember, I think I told you this before, but it's like the only thing I could compare my athletic achievements to Zane Ochara's. Um, and, you know, he is now much faster, but his very first full was 338, I want to say, it, and my fastest was 339. So that's pretty good. No, but it was just that's cool that, like, literally, I was like, wow, we did something where we were both trying hard and, and we had almost the same time. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Then he kept trying uh, hard and he ran like a 310, which just like I know my limitations and that that is that is way Try beyond. harder. Oh, okay. That's well, your limitations. Here's the thing. Actually, if we did this game and I don't know why we, anyone would do this, but if someone like said, "Okay, you don't have to work and we're going to like give you a trainer." And so okay. the the reason I say work is like so that I could just devote my life to like eating properly, sleeping properly and training right and get the help of a trainer. Maybe, and it's this is a maybe. Maybe there's a world I could run a sub three twenty marathon. I don't okay. think so. Like, it, I got mad respect. Honestly, there's a lot of there's a lot of much faster runners out there, and they're and they are average Janes and Joes like myself who also work and have lots of things going on in their life, and they can run like two forty marathons, like just just savages. I have anyway tons of respect for them, but I don't know what my ultimate capability would be if I could just do it sort of twenty four seven. But sadly, I don't think I'm going to find out either. Uh, what is the, uh, how many days is this, is your streak at? I keep it on my phone now. Cause a lot of people ask, like basically a Google search as of today, I'm at 1433 days. That's amazing. I'm hitting for my four year anniversary is on April 29th. So I'm less than a month out from my four year anniversary. That is amazing. Uh, full credit to you for being able to do that. Okay. I got two more questions for you. This one from Congo red. This might actually be the weirdest question we've ever received. Uh oh. CJ. We've had some weird ones. Well, let me know what you think of this one. CJ, the Canadian government has blown your deep cover spy mission and you need to leave the country. You need to leave your old life behind and start anew. How are you disguising yourself to leave the country and what is your plan to leave? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even have like what is <laughs> like I told you this is the weirdest one we've ever gotten. It's I guess I'm gonna get like a, a trench coat and one of those like like a hat with the glasses on it or whatever. <laughs> Just look even more like a creep. <laughs> the, the classic disguise from a movie, and I'm gonna buy a plane ticket and go somewhere. Like I don't know. Just... What am I supposed to say? Like shave my head and then like cross the border at night. That could work as an answer if you want. Uh, <laughs> that is a weird question. I go was not full Walter, go full Walter White. I guess I was not prepared for that. No, no, you know, I, in all fairness, how could you prepare for that? I like. I just hope that none of this ever becomes something I have to think about. Yeah, that, I'm glad you and I both. If you could live in another country, which one would it be? Like if you had to live in one other place, um, are you going for culture? Are you going for heat, like weather or something? Are you going for? Um, it would be cool to see what living in. Oh God, I almost said living in England. It's just the problem is the food is so bad. The food I... is all. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I, I mean. No, your your family's Scottish, but or your, at least your dad. Yeah, don't worry, us Scots aren't known for much better food than the English. It's more or less all the. It's just it's just basically if English. it's brown, it's it's probably like that's the color palette. It's just there's no seasoning on the damn food. It's just not. I don't know. I would <laughs> it would be cool to like live in that country and experience the culture and all that. It's just I would need to live in some part of the the country where. I don't know. The food can't be that. I've lived, I've lived in London for a year when I was just out of university and I could live there again. So. And look, I love there's London. A, it so, was awesome. There's so many different things to do and, and experience in London. And uh, like, I, I've been to Stratford upon Avon for, and, and gone to the globe theater. Like there's, it's beautiful. It's a great place. Obviously the premier league games, soccer games, so many different things about England. 
the damn food. I can't do it. I wonder about it's, Spain. I've I've only like visited. Spain seems interesting, but Spain like seems like promising. Seems Germany, like co- Germany seems cool. Yeah, I was thinking Spain is like cost of living seems pretty good. The weather is obviously on point if you're looking for a little bit better than what we get here in Canada. Anyway, we're all, we're all over the place. That's now that, ask CJ now is CJ asking random questions of Julian. That's fine. I I think that's cool. Uh, we how should about do that for from... like a, when we get into true garbage time. We'll just do an episode yeah. on a Monday where I just come with random questions for you. Okay, uh, Julian, now if it was a deep spy mission, how would you? How would you disguise yourself and how would you leave the country? You would never know. Um, Chucky Picks has a uh, hope I'm not too late here, but very important question for CJ. Did Coburg Papa have a good birthday? Coburg Papa had the best birthday. Uh, it was on Sunday. Happy to have another spin around the sun for my dad. And yeah, because we had uh, got some family time over the weekend with the extended family and some Easter celebrations. He did text me and say that he felt like he was. Uh, overshadowed somewhat by the Easter bunny on Sunday, but uh, oh, no. <laughs> that's because some of the youngest members of my family were sleeping at his house. And obviously I'm assuming enjoyed some kind of chocolate Sunday morning. Um, but yeah, it was great. We had a cake for him. We sang. Um, and I think he just, you know, for my dad, what's uh, most important to him is family. And mm-hmm. when his family's together for a few days like that, uh, he's, he's happy. And his birthday was probably secondary in his own mind. Oh, happy birthday, Coburg Papa. Uh, we all love you here at the SDPN and uh, really happy to see uh, you celebrate another year. Around and he time. claims he's a 110 percenter because he's not only listened to every episode, he's listened to some of them twice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't know how like th- the podcast I've loved the most. I've never listened to twice. So I don't know. Like, I realize he's living that retired life out there. So maybe he's just like, oh, I just want to hear it again. But like. Have you mentioned the podcast you love the most? No, because I don't really have just one. I, I, I'm, I'm fickle. What is I, that? Okay, like, I, I know you don't listen back to a lot of like hockey and like sports stuff. No, I listen to like a lot of economics and investing podcasts. I listen to Leaf Report uh, with James Myrtle and Jonas Siegel, two of my buddies. Shout out to them. And they've been going. Their podcast goes back to like 2013. Like they, they are an older podcast. And, uh, it's the reason I like listening to them is cause it's kind of like hanging out with my friends a little bit. Like, you know, I'd like, cause we don't see each other enough these days. There was a time, you know, I would be out more with those guys or we'd be on the road together more. So like, I, I it's almost like you get to have an argument with them. Like, yeah, James, that's a stupid take. Um, <laughs> oh, damn. damn. I listened. Wow. <laughs> I obviously listened to the SDP. So I thought they were your buddies. What is yeah, this? Well, I mean, who doesn't argue with their buddies? That's part of being buddies with someone. I mean, we've argued before. So yeah, yeah case exactly. in point. Yes. I listen to the SDP. Yeah. I listen, I listen to, to agent too. provocateur, especially if he has a guest on that peaks. You my still interest. can't say provocateur, provocateur, which is funny. Uh, I listen to the overdrive pod. I told you that. Like sometimes I just catch overdrive in pod yeah. form. So yeah, I, but I, I'm not, I, it's not like I don't have one pod that I catch. Every, I'm not a hundred percent of any pod. I think I told you that. Like I, yeah, I kind of go on feel and I go through like I like I binge a pod for a little while and then like I want something different. I don't know. That's fine. A lot of those yeah. runs I mentioned there, too. I go music free. Like I don't I just leave the cell phone at home. That is insane. Or, or I like don't know pod if I could free, do that. Audio free. That that's crazy. I Then again, I I I listen to music every day. So like I, I don't know how that could. Wow. You just listen to like nature My thoughts or just. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm I, you're built different. You're obviously built different. Cause I could never do that. I can't do it. I just it, need to listen to something. I think it's individual. Like some runners I've heard the same thing, like sounds weird, but it's almost, it's almost more relaxing to just like settle into your own brain. Like a lot of all you're thinking, this will sound weird, but it's like, I just like, I'm looking at my watch. I'm like, okay, I'm three K in. It's, you're almost like doing like a check. Like, how do I feel? How are my legs? How's my breathing? I don't know, like that. It, anyway, no, no, please, please. We got going. some runners out there that can probably identify that. Then I also know some runners though that like to be distracted because they like to just get lost in the music or the podcast and for, and forget how much time's going by. So I, I don't know. I can see the argument for both, but I would say less than half of my runs do I have a pod or music in. 
that's still very impressive. And uh, we should say, if you're one of those who like to have podcasts or music in your ears and you choose to listen to ours, <laughs> yeah, I guess I shouldn't be here being you. like, yeah, I don't listen to like podcasts. Eh, the waste yeah, po- of time podcasts with that. suck. They're terrible. You shouldn't listen to the you shouldn't listen to the CJ show or the Steve Dagle podcast network or the Age of Provocateur show. None of that crap. Yeah. I need a good baseball podcast, maybe. Is there a good Jays podcast out there? Ooh. Um That's a good question, actually. I don't know. I if... should find one that maybe makes me a little, little cheerier about my even yeah. after seeing them go two and two against Tampa to start the season. I just I don't know. It's a 162 game season, man. There's a lot of time, ton of time, a lot of time to feel optimistic. And I like, maybe you will I like Justin Turner uh, doing it for the old guys out there. Is it 39? Bi- had a big Sunday at the plate. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of time for you to feel optimistic about your Jays, just as there is uh, a lot of time for all the NHL playoff teams to feel optimistic about their teams until the playoffs. And we covered as much as we could cover today. I yeah, have a feeling covering a lot. I know we had this debate about how many hundred percenters there are. I think our number just dropped today. I, I don't know how many people no. can get to the end of this show. No, I don't think that number dropped. And if that number was going to drop, like if no. we had 500, because obviously remember when I estimated this, then we got barrage with people saying there, if we had 500 to start the day, we might only have like 480 at the end of this. No, pod. <laughs> losing 28. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you to all the hundred percenters who listened. Uh, thank you to and to the, the hundred and ten percenter, the one of you out there. Yeah, the OG, the OG, <laughs> hundred ten percenter. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with a brand new episode. And uh, subscribe to the show. Subscribe to all the other great content we have here at the SDPN. We'll see you all very soon. Peace. The Chris Johnston Show inside the game twice a week. Follow Chris on Twitter at reporter Chris and follow Julian McKenzie at JK McKenzie.